going to talk to Mrs. Black, the matriarch of the community. State conference for Sigmas and Zetas, and we've had joint state conferences since the 70s because of her leadership. Uh, she's, I mean, she's been amazing. The Head Start Center uh, that's here named for Aaron Henry, she's worked with that program for decades, uh, ever to ensure that children in Mahoma County got nutritious meals. Uh, oh, wow. And she loved them. I mean, she loves them. And she's still in her uh, senior years visit with the center on an often basis. I mean, almost every day she's by there, still wanting to see the little kids. And she's still working here? She's still actively working? She's retired, but okay. retirement for her didn't mean leave the scene. It just gave her an opportunity to continue her work in a different way. Okay. And so she's continuously involved in the community in a number of aspects. She's uh, a member of the NAACP Board of Directors. She's still very involved in Zeta Phi Beta. Uh, she's still working with the young kids who are, you know, programs here in the community. So she's an amazing woman. Uh, she really obeys the spirit of God, and so you'll have a chance to meet her in a few minutes, and she'll share with you her story. Okay. Okay. Hello and welcome to Growth Talk. I am your host, Duvalier yeah, Malone. I'm here in the heart of the Mississippi Delta here in Clarksdale, Mississippi. And I'm here with one of the Montreals of the Mississippi Delta, Miss Blackman. Miss Blackman, how are you doing today? Fine. Doing fine. I should say fine because I'm able to be up and out. I know. Some I know. days I'm not that well. You know? So it's just so good to meet you. I want you to give us a background about Clarksdale and um, we're heading to the crossroad over there. Tell us a little about that. Uh, well, you know, the crossroad came into being because of the blues. Everybody was so low in spirit. Nothing really going on good in Clarksdale. So this guy, they think his name right now, but he's black. But Compose this song about the crossroad and this, yeah, you uh, are the right, and uh, that's the, how the crossroad got started. Well, you know, Crossdale has been in existence for quite a number of years, here, and uh, we are still trying to go forward. Uh, we started off at such a low ebb back there that we know. Uh, School support back then. We had no no grants, no scholarships, no nothing like that. And uh, what we got was truly from scratch. I grew up in a little community, two miles below Sheridan, where they lived in Sheridan, about six miles out of Clarksdale South. We came to Cohoma uh, County from uh, South Mississippi. Uh, yeah, I would miss it. Okay. That's where I was born. Wow, okay. Uh, so uh, we came up the river in 1927. I was three years old. Wow. On a boat. <laughs> <laughs> On a boat, wow. we, Yeah, we landed uh, about two miles from Sherrod across the levee. And when we came in, that was the biggest high water that had ever been in the history of the devil. Wow. Going on at that time, mm -hmm. uh, we lost just about all of our clothes trying to get in off the river. And we got in off the river and come the whole water was in all the flat land. But it so happened that my father had uh, five children. And the big farmers were looking for people with uh, children and, you know, the children to be, you know, and my father and my mother. So uh, they helped us to get um, housing. And uh, we stayed out there, uh, I guess, until about 19 and 20, about 19 and 30, and then I would share it. 
he won't go wrong in a few hours. They gave me a job in the dining hall. That's where I had work here. Yeah. And I worked on the switchboard for a while. Oh, I thought I was rich. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. four years I was there. I had two hairline, two jobs. Plus, I tried to get into what was happening on the campus. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, right. That is amazing. So, my supervisor in the dining hall was responsible for my going Greek. Uh huh. Wow. She thought that I ought to be a Zeta. <laughs> <laughs> we had AKs and we had Deltas on the campus. Mm -hmm. They were all courting me. Oh, wow. oh boy, what, what, what is this all about, you know? But I stuck with Zeta because of my supervisor. Wow. And she told me, uh, if you go Zeta, I know you're going to use the same tactics that you use here on the campus. You work, you go to class, and you play when you can. <laughs> yes. And I did. <laughs> so it paid off. Oh, wow. I went Zeta in 1946. After I left the campus, I would like to somehow show you the history of Greekdom in Cohoon County. Wow. Zeta found Bela Soroy to open the way for Greeks in Cohoon County. When I came from Alcorn, there were two of us that went over Zeta. Mm -hmm. The two of us were from Coahoma County, and we came back on a mission to organize a graduate chapter in the Delta. Wow. So we worked on that between <laughs> 48 and 67. It took us that long to get through to the people in Cohoma mm -hmm. County, what Greekdom is all about. Wow. See, they thought that Greekdom was what they had seen in the kitchens where they worked for mm -hmm. white people. Uh, their daughters would come home, you know, out of line. They thought that all Greeks did that. But we had to live day by day to fight that all, wow. change that image. Finally, in uh, 1958, we changed it. That's and nice. the parents, those that took a lot of walking and knocking on doors, and organizing church services and what have you. So, in 1958, uh, there were about four of us then, because we would, uh, check the campuses to see what Zetas were coming to <laughs> North <laughs> Delta. So we had, at that time, we had gotten up to like four. And the four of us Zetas and the uh, church helped us with getting Greek them organized in this kind of so, in 1967, we got that charter. Look at this. Amazing. That's right. Amazing. And we have been coming forward ever since. Amazing. Well, we, awesome. Right now, we have six youth groups uh, that, you know, we man each year. And uh, they are doing pretty good. Uh, the essence of it is we try to stay in connections with the homes, the parents. And uh, that had never been the because uh, it's taken root. The uh, fraternities and the sororities are better than that. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Let me ask you this. With looking at Clarksdale, Mississippi and where you've come from and um, just all the stories that you told me thus far, what do you think is the solution now to grow Clarksdale to get it to be an even better place to live and a better place for kids and people to be, to, to, to take advantage? Right well, now, uh, what has to happen here now? Mm -hmm. Leadership. Our leadership, uh, they're doing the best they can. 
But we have a way here in the Delta of voting for who I like rather than who fits the job spot. So until we can get past that, then we will stay right in the state that we are in. We have got to learn that in order to do better, we must have a good educational background and the persistence from our leaders. Leadership is going to have to get up. I want you, I want to bring in uh, Marco McMillan with me, and I want you to give me that story about um, how you met him, and I want to get him on the set now. I, know, I met Marco, Marco as a child, <laughs> <laughs> as a little boy. Uh -huh. I don't know how to believe I go about sixth grade or something. But anyway, uh, I think I told you that I worked in the school system until I lost my hearing. Mm -hmm. Well, I had had this loss of hearing since birth, old I got but more came on. Mm -hmm. So Marco's mother has the same weakness. So at that time I was trying to get into the technology of having this operation to restore my hair. And um, I think Marco heard about it. And he came to visit with me, see if this was true. And he told me a story about his mother. And uh, at that time, I couldn't tell him whether she could or she couldn't, but I, we would try. Because, uh, you know, the doctor tests you to see if you are a good patient for this kind of operation. So I went through with mine. And it turned out well. Marco and I held hands from then on. <laughs> you know, I, I would keep him up on what was happening to me, and uh, we would try to get the same thing going by his mother. Uh, it so happens she was not a good patient for this type of operation. But then she was not in the state I was in, because, see, the older I got, the less I heard. And I had to depend on technology uh, when the time came around that it shut down. And to show up in 1979, they shut down. And of course, Marco's mother went through a lot. She went through a lot. All people in our uh, position, you know, this type of illness. Uh, you go through more than other people that have measles or chicken pox or something. I said, it's forever with you. And uh, at, at that time, uh, we didn't have the, uh, we didn't have, uh, in the medical field, we didn't have uh, places to go to uh, see about our hair. We, we didn't have nothing like that going. What we got was from scratch. And I know Marco can tell you where that scratch bag comes from. <laughs> and uh, of course, as time passed, and persistence kept pushing, then people began to realize that we were human beings like they were. And uh, for me, uh, I guess I paved the way so hard that when I walk in now, they say, oh, it's, <laughs> oh, here comes Miss Blackbird. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Uh, but see, it grew up with me. My father and mother were strict, strict disciplinarians. And my father did not allow any handouts, that's what he called them. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, that time he was giving commodities. You can use it now. Every, every person was supposed to live by his way of his own life. And, and uh, that's what we did. 
And Ms. Blackburn, this is such a good example. You know, so many times in the African American community, we are placed with that stigma that we believe in government assistance, that we don't have the, you know, the drive to achieve and to do great things and to work hard for what we want. But even back during those days, your father was instilling in you principles to work very hard for what you wanted and not to depend on government. And even back in those days, that those values and that myth isn't true. You know, that is amazing. That is amazing. Wow, and that was back in what year was that? Oh. Um, well, I told you, we came to the death when I was three years old. That was in 1927. In 1927. Uh -huh. Amazing. In 1927. 1927, and I graduated from Alcorn in 1948. During that span of time. But it all started at home. At home. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, there were 11 of us in this three room house out here at Cheryl. And to show you how my father would. Uh, uh, get us started off with our work habits. Everybody had a job to do. And he would check these jobs to see if we did it right. And to see if we finished it. Amazing. And I guess that's what's the matter with me now, Mark. <laughs> 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 he would say, uh, he, my father didn't go to school much, so he said, uh, always hold your role out to the end. That means finish your job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we had that to do. And everybody had this job to do. Uh, and by the way, school was uh, six months out of the year for us black people. Oh, wow. White people went nine months. Nine months. And so happened that we lived right beside the road out there. Uh -huh. And we'd see these white children on the bus going to school. We had to walk. Uh -huh. Rain, shine, sleet, or snow. We had to walk. Uh -huh. So we did that. And uh, in our house, you had to go to school if you were school day. You had to go to church. And you had to see about the older people in the community. There was a lady that lived out there, had two acres of land that belonged to her. And I, I can't think back to know why she didn't have children, you know, that would come in to see about her. But when we got finished, uh, we were sharecroppers, we got through chopping out part of the sharecropping deal over here, we'd have to go over to her place and chop her cattle. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> but the father demanded this. <laughs> you do this. Same thing for picking cotton. We picked her cotton, just like we picked that for sharecropping over here. That's amazing. Amazing. And you just, you made a good point when you talked about the taking care of the elderly. And uh, do you think in the state of Mississippi, uh, the legislators and congressmen, do you think that we do a good job sometimes no. looking back at the elders? I, Elaborate on that. I can tell you, no. Uh, I was reading AARP magazine uh -huh. just last week, and uh, they were talking about in-home care of the elderly. Uh, there was a lady that was trying to get in-home care in another state. And uh, somehow they were trying to tack this to, and they did in the other state. Mm -hmm. They, they tacked this in-home care into Medicaid. Wow. But that's not so in Mississippi. Right. Amazing. And in fact, when you go into a nursing home in Mississippi, I don't know what to do in other states, you have to sign your life over to them. Everything you got, if your bank account, if you have property, 
everything. But the care behind it is not there. The nursing homes here, mm -hmm. you can go there and you pass the door, you see elderly people in there that uh, maybe they don't have families large enough to see them every day, but they are just there. And hospitals really don't do a good job. They, uh, meals come in mm -hmm. at meal time. They take it in there and set it on, on the table over there. The person that brought it in, go on to the next one and set it on the table. If you can't get out of bed and get it, you have to wait till your family come along or somebody will give it to you. Otherwise, you will going to start the death over there. Exactly. Now, that, that happens every day over there. And but the nursing homes are, uh, are not much better. Miss mm -hmm. Blackburn, this, this, um, this interview is going to be aired across the state of Mississippi. And uh, I want you to look into the camera, and I want you to charge our leaders and state legislators, and even charge your leaders here in Clarksville, um, to what, what do you think that they can do better to impact those nursing homes and make a difference in the elderly? Because that's a value that I think that is really, really important, mm -hmm. because uh, a lot of time we receive the wisdom from the elderly, and then when they're old and, and they're, they're, they are not able to give us what they once could give us, then we throw them away. And I love what you said, that your last duty was to always look after the elderly. Right. And that's a principle that sometimes my generation, we, don't, we can't relate to. Right. Uh, and me being here with you today has awakened me to research and to get involved. Uh, and to also charge our legislators and use my influence in the state of Mississippi to make a difference. But I want you to look into the camera uh -huh. and I want you to talk to the legislators for about two minutes about what you think they can do to make a difference in the state of Mississippi. Okay. In, in our state, in our state of Mississippi, our legislators need to First of all, know what's going on in their own community. If they know this, then they could write legislation to try to have it. But as it is, uh, we stay so busy, you know, with uh, other things that we do not get to the core of the needs of the people in the community. Now, I just left the meeting, a little mission meeting, and we were, the president, that new president, she was uh, going down the list of, uh, of uh, the list of things that missionaries are supposed to do in the community. And they had this one on there about health relating to the elderly. And I, I said to her, uh, I think we need to pass something like this off to our legislators and help to educate them on our real need. If they knew our real need, I believe they would write legislation to help us to live better in our communities. Now, aside from the elderly, uh, everybody here is talking about crime. But crime just didn't happen on its own. There was a reason for it. As children grow up, they want things. And they have been taught that we don't have to work for it. We go to the mailbox and get the check out of there. Okay, the check they get out of there, the parents says, it's not enough for the parents to do the things that they want done. Somebody need to get through to them. That's not the way to live. The way to live is to work for it. Then you can spend your money like you want to. Yes, so those are two needs. Uh, and crime would not be as much as it is if children were more involved in good things. The good side of life. That's the reason I spend so much time with the young people. I could be at home right now in the bed somewhere. 
But if you're going to involve young people, I always try to support it because I believe that's a, a way of fighting crime. We have got to hold hands with these children. And the time to hold hands is now. Not to wait until they get 20, 25, 30. They sat in their way. The jailhouse is full of them. Us down there. For one reason or the other, it might be. Uh, for a good reason, it may not be. But I, I believe the legislators have us in their hands. And I believe they are going to have to become educated on the real needs out there and then write legislation. And we will support getting it to pass. That's it. Thank you so much, Ms. Blackburn. Mm -hmm. And I cannot wrap up this interview without, I know that you guys have a big election coming up here in Clarksdale, mm -hmm. Mississippi, here of uh, the mayor's election. Mm -hmm. What are your views on the mayor's election, and what do you expect to see happen differently this year? What, what do you think needs to happen different uh, this year as it relates to the mayor's election here in Clarksdale? Well, now, <coughs> uh, the election is getting off uh, just like any other election we've always had, with one exception. Mm -hmm. That's my girl. He's a different kind. A person. Mm -hmm. And in checking his background, he already knows what's needed out there. Mm -hmm. You know, he came up on the street out there. And he knows what is needed. Uh, the average person that we have running for the top spots, they call it, leadership haven't spent enough time finding out what the real needs are. If they have, they haven't addressed it in what they're going to do for Clive State. Now, many of them, uh, I don't know them all, but a few of those that I know, some of them did grow up here in Clive State. But they have not had that experience and educational background uh, to fill that job slot to make class stay better. Now, I shoot back here. And I do, I firmly believe that. You know, we pray, I do. And I used to hear my father pray early in the morning. God bless my family. Give them the courage to stick with education. Many of us are praying uh, for the progress of Christ's day. All right, when God answers you, stop and take time and look around and say, He has offered us, and it's our choice. And I believe that it's our choice to accept and support and find out what the real issues are or make the real issues known to the proper souls. Then we can curb the number one of J.R.'s over. And I'm hoping we can curb the number of shoot em ups we have every weekend. It's going to take a lot of assistance and good leadership to get us out of this. And I believe that God has sent us somebody to lead us. And I'm hoping that we will accept. That's good. That's good. Miss mm -hmm. McNeil, I thank you so much for having me. I thank you so much for coming on today. And I look forward to the great things that Clarksdale has to come. I, I thank well, you. Thank you. I have nothing against the leadership we have, with the exception of not coming to the rescue 
of the needs here. They are all good people, and I guess they're doing the best they can. But the time is here and now. And I believe God is going to help us to get out of this by sending us the leadership that we need. Three, two. We're back on site here at Clarksdale, Mississippi, and I'm here with the Sparkling Jewels. How y'all doing? Good. Little nice to meet you guys. So I want you to tell me your name one by one. What's your name? Ashley. Ashley. Nice to meet you, Ashley. What's your name? Duntasia. Duntasia. Nice to meet you. And what's your name? Yukara. Who? Yukara. Yukara. Nice to meet y'all. So tell me a little about yourself, starting with you. Well, I'm in fifth grade, and uh -huh. I'm 10 years old, and I go to Murder Hall for Okay. And tell me about you. Well, I'm sitting in grade, and we have a good school out in the woods. In the woods? <laughs> and tell me about you. Um, I'm eight years old. I go to Red Hall for and I'm in Friends Okay. Now tell me, what do you guys want to do when you grow up? Starting, I'll start with you. I want to be a professional dance slash teacher. Oh, dance slash teacher. Wow. What do you want to do? I want to be a professional dance coach slash a nurse. Okay, dance coach and nurse. What do you want to do? I want to be a professional dancer slash designer. Wow, wow. We are here, and as you guys can see in the state of Mississippi, that all the way here in the Mississippi Delta, that we have young, brilliant minds that have a bright future ahead of them. And I want you guys to get involved and support them. Because as you can see, you guys dance, right? Yes. Awesome. So you guys go on field trips, off places, in different places. Where have y'all been lately that was fun? Jackson. Jackson, Mississippi. I live in Jackson, Mississippi. Where did y'all go in Jackson? We went to the competition and we first place. Oh, y'all won first place. Wow. That's so awesome. What y'all got coming up soon that people can get involved and help you guys with? In March, we're, I think we're going to Memphis. Y'all going to Memphis in March? Okay, going to Memphis in March. That's awesome. So, what are you guys doing this summer? Uh, we're going to the boot camp. Okay, boot camp the museum. Wow. Let me ask you this: With this being February Black History Month, what have you guys learned about Black History this month? Starting with you. Well, I learned that the Blacks have went through a lot, and our teacher, Miss Miller, she gave us a project and gave us a person to do it. And I got a Oh, wow. And how old are you? Ten. Ten. Wow. So tell me, what did you learn this Black History Month so far? Well, we was on a computer, and I got an A+, and 741 points from looking at the Black History points and on the test, and they gave us, like, questions about the past. Oh, wow. What about you? Oh wow! So as you all can as listen to you guys, we're standing on their shoulders today because of their sacrifices, right? Yes. Wow! So I want each one of you guys to tell me what do you think about the president, President Barack Obama, and Michelle, and First Lady Michelle Obama being the first African Americans to stand as president and First Lady of these United States of America. What do you think about it? It's very extraordinary. Extraordinary. So, will you consider Michelle Obama one of your role models? Yes. Oh, wow. What about you? Tell me what you think about it. Well, I think I was happy that he won president because he is a good president. Wow. What do you think about the first lady? She's a good. She's a good lady, and she she a good lady. Oh, awesome. What 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 are your views? I'm, I'm happy. Right. And what do you think about Mrs. Obama? She's good. Awesome, awesome. So, uh, if you guys could tell uh, tell the state of Mississippi anything that you want to see happen in the future as it relates to education, what would you say, starting with you? Well, Look into the camera for me, sweet. I believe that they should make a dance in school that will, that will help children become better dancers who dream to become one. And I want people to know that they don't be afraid and just go ahead and do it. 
Awesome. I think people should make for what schools so people can get more information and learn something. Awesome, awesome. I thank you guys for coming on today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As you guys can see, that the state of Mississippi has a very bright future. And the Growth Talk radio show, along with Duval Yay Malone Enterprises and Dream to Succeed, will be getting you more information on these young ladies in ways that you guys can support them throughout the state of Mississippi. My foundation, Dream to Succeed, we're going to get their information and sponsor these young ladies to go to Memphis, Tennessee. So I'm so excited for that. And I want to get you guys down in the studio in Jackson and talk to me some more, okay? Okay. Nice meeting you guys. All right. Mm -hmm. This is the old landmark. This is where... Were you born and raised here? I was born and raised in Clarksville, Mississippi. I was baptized here at New Jerusalem Church. Actually, when I was baptized, I was um, that was our sanctuary. We'll go by that part of the building. It's now our <laughs> fellowship hall, okay. named for my uncle, Reverend J.B. Woods. He was my minister up until his death. Uh, well, our church has not had uh, but only three or four pastors in its history. Uh, my uncle was one of the longest service pastors, long, longest, or you know, what I'm saying, longest serving pastors, uh, having served for a number of years. And uh, upon his passing, uh, Brother Glassman, who's our current pastor, uh, has been serving us since. Okay. There's nothing about leadership that concerns me more than the heart of a man. Who is he at the foundational level? Not what his skills are, not what his gifts are, but what causes him to make the kinds of decisions that he makes. For me, my foundation is Christ Jesus. And so every place that I go and everything I've done, I've always sought to do good, with good, with the good that was in me, with the good skills that I had, with the good talents that I had. But some people, as we know, would take what was meant for good and use it for evil. I'm grateful to New Jerusalem Church for having given me the right foundation such that I can be able to give my gifts to, to God's people in service for His humanity. So you're coming back here, right, on yes. the 18th, right? Correct. Okay. On Tell February the 18th, we'll be back here at New Jerusalem Church to make uh, my candidacy public uh, and the community is invited. Uh, Mrs. Bertha Blackburn, with whom we had an opportunity to speak to earlier, is uh, the official hostess for that event. She will be introducing me to the community. And I think it's such a beautiful thought behind it simply because at one point in our history when we were in Africa, there would be a time when the elders in the community would tap on the youth in the community, groom them, develop them, and at some point pass on the mantle. So I think on February the 18th we'll see a uh, very vivid display of something that's very symbolic, and that is a matriarch passing on to the elder the mantle of leadership. And we've got to continue to do that in our community all over the state all over the world quite frankly speaking is having people who have been through the trenches to come forth and say I see in you what's necessary to move us forward as a people this race is not about me this is about the gifts that have been provided to me the opportunities I've had and, and to be able to use those and allow those to be used for the good of God's kingdom building so in I think I'm out <laughs> oh, you out? Yep. We got to get him a memory card. Yeah, let's go do it. Now. And there's a difference between someone who has skills and someone who has skills and love for mankind. Uh, because that's what you, that's what the difference is made. The difference is made when you have a heart for the people. Uh, and so, for me, that's why it's so absolutely important that we do it the right way. Uh, because we've done it a many of ways before now, and it hasn't quite gotten us anywhere. So we're going to try to do it the right way. So Marco, you're not afraid that coming back to your home church and announcing your candidacy will give people who are not so in tune with the religious movement would kind of frighten them away from your campaign and say, oh, he's too spiritual, too churchy. You're not afraid of that because, you know, a lot of people don't believe that we should mix the government and the church. Leadership has to be number one bold. And this is absolutely a bold move. But I'm convinced that we've done it the other way before now and it hasn't worked. I think there was a movement in America at one point because we haven't always had the separation of church and state. That came about at some point in time and it was for a particular reason. And I believe that when it occurred it was for a purpose and it was to allow greed to have its day. Greed has had its day 
evil has prevailed and people are suffering and the, by the masses. So I think at some point we got to go back to that old landmark. And in America, the religion of our people was the base of how we became what we call a great nation. So we got to go back there, you know, and I know that's going to be a difficult conversation for many people. Uh, I'm just at this point in my life bold enough to say let's have the conversation. And so I'm going to do it that way. May not mean, you know, may mean that I don't win, but I at least think we're advancing a new conversation that fundamentally could shift everything in America. So can you give us a, a sneak preview of how the program will be uh, on that day, on the 18th? Uh, will it be very, you know, set up? Will it be like a church service? Will it be more so just a laid back kind of thing? How, how, how would the church, how is the service going to be? So the 18th is uh, going to be a very important day in what I consider now a movement. The campaign is where we were when we started this thing. We're more in a phase of a movement now. I'm just feeling a different kind of spirit. So it's going to be a very spirit-filled moment for us uh, to come together and really reflect on the times, uh, the, the times we've overcome, the time in which we're in now. Uh, and God's people will have a chance to worship and petition His throne for guidance in this election. This is going to be a very important election, not to just Clarksdale, but this is about Mississippi and the nation because we have 40% of the people uh, in our community who live in poverty every day. And that's one of the highest numbers in the nation. So if we can get this right here, we can get the nation right in terms of uh, how God's people are served. So we're going to have good music. We're going to have good fellowship. I'll have an opportunity to present my platform to the public. I'm going to entertain questions. I'll be able to provide some insight as to my thinking. And I want the public to also challenge me. Because we've got to challenge each other for the greater good of God's humanity. And we're going to have some food. You cannot have a good time without having that opportunity to fellowship and break bread. So all that's going to happen right here at New Jerusalem Church on February the 18th at 6 o'clock p.m. And we do want the public here with us. This is all about God's people. This is all about all of us. Right. So it's going to be more so not just uh, an opportunity. From listening to you, it's not just going to be an opportunity for you to present yourself as a candidate more so, but it's going to be an opportunity for us to pray for our community, for us to come together, for us to have dialogue about issues that affect the community. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. That's, that's amazing. That's Absolutely. Amazing. Because that's what the state of Mississippi needs more. I, I believe that if we can educate a people, then we can grow the community. And you're doing exactly that. You're getting them educated. And in the midst of that, you're just having it symbolically coming back home to what you believe to have been the the foundation of your bringing okay so a lot of people you know don't be uh, uh, afraid of it being held at a church but it's just that that's where you are that's where you are coming from not per se that you're pushing that off on someone else I, I see where you're going with that that's that's amazing dialogue is needed on those kind of issues and people have to embrace whoever they are whoever they are, in every aspect of who they are. I'm coming here because people say they don't know me. To get to know me is to know every aspect of who I am, and the church is a part of who I am. I'm no greater than the church. The church is within me in terms of the word and who, and who I believe in. And so I want people to recognize that this is about embracing leaders in their wholeness. Uh, we oftentimes look at people in uh, silos, you know, certain aspects of people. But in order to know the people that we are considering for public office, we need to know everything about them. And this is a part of who I am. And so everything we're doing in this campaign or in this movement is symbolic. Uh, and so we're just very glad to be back home. We're glad that my church has uh, opened its doors to allow me to share with God's people and in our community what's, what's, what's on the horizon, what's absolutely necessary for us to be considering as we look to move Clarksdale forward. That's amazing. That's amazing. Awesome. Awesome job. Awesome job. So God can get some glory. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. Let the I don't like that on the back. My mama's gonna get some of my kids. You know, you got fat, that just hurt my feelings. I'm like, I don't want to be fat. So we're here at 
uh, the legendary landmark of supposedly the crossroads uh, here at Highway 49 and 61 in Clarksville, Mississippi. And I have a very inquisitive mind. It's just the nature of who I am. And so I began to research and try to come to understand why this monument was such one that uh, drew attention from all over the world. People come to Clarksdale every year to celebrate the blues, but more importantly to honor this monument. And so in my research, I came to understand that a gentleman from Mississippi named Robert Johnson, um, for some reason or another in Clarksdale, decided to come to this intersection and make an important decision. Uh, it was in 1930. Uh, and he decided in the 1930s that he was going to decide to uh, sell his soul to the devil. I don't understand what that means other than he, he perpetuated evil. And Clarksdale, from my, from my view, has suffered because of that. And I think we have an opportunity to evaluate this time around and get it right. So we have come back to the crossroads and we're going to decide to go in a different direction than what we've been. And I'm saying to all of the people in Clarksdale that we can do it. We can do good for all of God's people. We can do good for ourselves. We can do better in many respects. But we've got to make the right decisions. And Robert Johnson obviously made the wrong decision. And so I stand on these grounds and say, this go around, we're going to make the right decision. So, Mark, do you believe that uh, the Paul's wrote here, and because of the actions of Robert Johnson, that now the city of Clarksdale has had this cloud hovering over. Talk to me about that. I do believe that for some strange reason or another, I think. At the end of the day, you can take your gifts and your talents. He was a great blues man, singer, guitarist. Uh, you can take your gifts and talents and you can use them either for good or for evil. I've seen people take their money and use it for good. I've seen them take their money and use it for evil. I've seen the Word of God used for the good, and I've seen the Word of God used for evil. So what I'm saying is anything that we come into contact with by way of gifts and talents and skills and resources can be used for either or. For some reason, Robert Johnson chose to use his gifts for evil. I'm saying I choose to use my gifts for good. And I do, I do think that people are tied to that whole movement that comes behind the decision that you make. And so, yes, I think Clarksdale has, because, too, we celebrate this thing. I mean, we're placed in here as a, a mark of, of, of remembrance. Uh, I think that does have some say in terms of the way we operate. And I truly believe that, you know, it has some impact on us in some very adverse ways. I've never seen circumstances so uh, grave as what we're seeing in Clarkson in terms of crime at the highest that it's ever been, in terms of school dropout, it's at the highest it's ever been. Anything that's good, we're at the bottom of the charts, and anything that's evil or bad, we're at the top of the charts. So I would like to say that this crossroads may have had some barriers to the community. To the and so that's why it's so important that you go back to the church on the 18th so that you guys can have dialogue, and that you guys can pray for this barrier that have set over the city for so long to hopefully that a change will come. Is that where you're trying to go? You know, Sam Cook, who is someone we're very proud of, he, he, he was a clock stallion. Uh, he had a song that he was saying that a change is going to come. And, and when you listen to it, he says, it's been too hard living, but I'm afraid to die, but a change is going to come. I think this is the change we have been seeking and waiting for. I think we've just got to go about it the right way. And I think, uh, at least for me in my life, everything I've ever done has been a result of my prayers, been a result of my relationship with God, but more importantly, in many instances, it's been the decisions I have made. So we're going to make the right decision. I want all people to recognize that we're in this together. We have to continue to make the right decisions together. Exactly. Can we walk over? I want to actually see. I see this from here. I'm not sure. What is that? Uh, is that uh, some kind of writing or something that's uh, sitting in the middle of there? You know, I'm blind to buy it. So, so but there's a monument there. I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It, yeah. it looks like it's a, a, a marker that speaks to what this means. And I've never looked at it. Okay. So today looks like we're going to learn something together. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, let's look at what, what they say about this.
Marco, I love this what it says. It says, and this goes back to what you are trying to do here, where it says it has a just pride in its libraries, its schools, and its churches, and is an important market for the known state of pride. Amazing. Amazing. This is the first time that you've ever saw this, which goes back into alignment to what you want to improve in the community, which is their library, the school, goes back to education, and improve the churches. Amazing. Amazing. We're going to reverse it. Amazing. We're going to reverse the curse. This moment right here is historical in its nature. I don't know that anybody's ever challenged the crossroad. I stand here today on behalf of all of God's people to say no more, no more suffering, no more poverty, no more war. We're going to go forward as a people. We're going to do it the right way. We'll try to the other way, and it has not worked, people. We have tried it, and it hasn't worked. This time, let's try something different and get to the place where we desire to be. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you, Marco, for having me in Clarksdale this week. And uh, I look forward to hearing great things about you in the state of the city. Thank you, Devaye. Good pictures. You doing good? Good, good. But this is where I grew up. Oh, wow. Yeah. It wasn't bricked, and then my grand the house we stand now was, that's the house my grandparents lived in. And, um, huh? Yeah, I used to stand in this one and look out the window all the time. You remember her, Melvin? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I grew, here, grew up here, and uh, when my grandmother passed in 94, uh, my granddaddy, who only has a third grade education, he was terrified of staying there by himself. So I moved in with him, and my mother continued to stay here. And then um, she eventually moved over to there, and we sold this property. I don't even know who owns it, but we sold it. But this is actually where I grew up. I played all on this street. Oh, wow. Um, the young lady who has the sparkling jewels dance troupe, uh -huh. her grandmother lived in this house, so this is where she was pretty much most of the time. So Tony and I have a unique connection, you see, okay. uh, because we grew up together. Okay. Uh, I don't know many families that still stay in this block that lived here when I grew up. I know uh, the, the, the roaches across the street and Miss Robinson is still here, uh, Terry is there. Uh, but this is where I grew up. I went to school right up the street, and as you can see, things have changed. Um, it hasn't always been, you know, this way, what we see. Uh, and we can change it back to where you, kids would safely play on the streets. We used to have the best of times out here on these streets. I mean, we would come out and play all day and play all night, and we didn't have to be concerned about crime or any of that, you know. But that since kind of changed, so I think we can reset the conditions, though. So is it a uh, high-level crime rate in this area now? Yeah, pretty much across the city, though. Across the city. Okay. Yeah, but it, we do have some here, some crime in this area. We have a majority of the crime in Oakhurst now, where uh, whites used to live, and then when a few blacks got there, they did what thing called white flight, and they moved on, and, and now that, that area is kind of infested with crime. Uh, but I'm not so sure that um, some of the things that are showing up in the community aren't a result of conditions that have been set. I was sharing with uh, Sean as we were riding this way that, you know, and, and this is kind of a very, um, this is a very much a stretch in terms of how I put it. But, you know, just like in a laboratory, if you put a rat in a laboratory, that rat's going to respond to whatever conditions you set. And, and, and oftentimes, to come to understand human nature, we were studied. Uh, and and they, they used the study of animals to kind of justify some of our behaviors. So I would truly believe that if rats respond to the conditions that, they're, that are set for them, we respond to conditions that are set for us. So I think this election is about having someone in, in City Hall who's willing to reset the conditions so we can have a different outcome. Uh, you know, I, I think I look at the drugs on the street and how many of the young people are being incarcerated for a blunt here or joint there or bag here or whatever. I'm saying, why are we talking about that when in fact somebody's actually planting that, those, those, those products, they're growing those products and then they're distributing those products. We ought to go to the place where the problem is and that is where, is where they're growing the marijuana. You see what I'm saying? I understand this is a very dangerous conversation, but again, leadership has to be bold. Uh, people are suffering. So, you know, I'm wanting to advance a new conversation in this city. And Marco, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you have been in Washington, so you have the experience to know how to 
uh, uh, allocate for funding for economic development, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Tell we us can a little about that. Sure thing. We can access the, the resources mm -hmm. uh, given what the conditions are here. Uh, part of that is understanding uh, how to navigate the system. Uh, one of the things I was able to do when I was in Washington for almost five years was I was able to make some connections with what I consider some very good people. Uh, and those connections were maintained. Uh, Phi Beta Sigma at the time I served as executive director got its first federal contract of a half a million dollars. We had never gotten a federal contract ever in almost 100 years. But because of some inroads and some connections we had, we were able to access those dollars. Uh, and I think that would be true for Clarksdale. If I'm in that seat and uh, able to really help to make a convincing case to the government as to why funding should come our way, uh, I do believe we can realize a new Clarksdale. Uh, and so I think truly, 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 truly that uh, having those resources and, access, and being able to access uh, the political structure in Washington would be a, big, a great benefit to Clarkstown. Thank you so much, Marco. And also, Marco, I think it's a really good thing that you're back here, that you're willing to come into the community and talk to these people. Because it's very much so that, as we've been saying all day, people need to be educated. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they're educated, they can understand to vote a different way. And not just vote a different way, but have a different perspective. Because me knowing you is not about per se votes, but it's about changing a mindset so that we can position ourselves for a greater cause in the future, which, which makes sense, you know? My whole life has been just that. It's been a fight for bettering people. Everywhere I've gone, everything I've ever done, I've always wanted to make life better for other people. Uh, and, and it's possible, but again, it's taking your gifts and talents and using it for good and not evil. And for people who wish to be self-serving, they will take their good gifts and use it to advance themselves and deny other people an opportunity to have equality and benefit uh, from the labels of others. So this is a very important conversation. I think this is a very important election. I'm hoping people all over the state of Mississippi and all over the world will weigh in and become a part of what I consider a new America. Because 40% of the people live in poverty right here every day. And they have to decide between a meal or a bill, right? And many have to make decisions that won't advance them financially. And we've got to help to resolve that issue. And that's the responsibility of good leadership in government. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Again, we're here in Clarksdale, Mississippi. And as I said, Growth Talk Radio Show and Do I Am Alone Enterprises, we have no ties to the city of Clarksdale, but we do have ties to improve poverty, to improve education in the state of Mississippi. And that's why we have joined force here with Marco McMillan to make a difference, not just for Clarksdale, but to bring attention for the state of Mississippi. So stay tuned for updates as we begin political panels to continue this dialogue of improving all communities because it's indeed all communities and if we're going to make it a better place we have to get involved so stay connected on our website marco give them your information how they can get in contact uh, with you my email address is marco mcmillan uh, at gmail.com that's marco m-a-r-c-o dot mcmillan m-c-m-i-l-l-i-a-n at gmail.com you may also visit us on Facebook. I do have a page I would like as many people to visit it as possible. That's Marco McMillan for Mayor. When you find yourself on our page, please like us. And we'll certainly uh, respond to any questions or concerns that you may have. All right? All right.